Hey guys, welcome to the Pantry Living Kitchen. Stephanie here, and today we're going to be making a meal that was actually recommended by a subscriber. Now, if you'll remember back in the garden tour, I think it was the garden tour video, I talked about how many cherry tomatoes I had and having no idea what to do with them. And that situation is not improving. So today we're going to be harvesting cherry tomatoes along with some other stuff out of the garden in order to make a roasted cherry tomato pasta. Now, as many of you know, I'm diabetic and very, very, very carefully trying to watch what I am consuming as far as carbs are concerned. I am trying to fight this disease, I guess you could call it, with food. Um, and so far, I am pleased with the results. But pasta, which is one of my all-time favorite foods, is an absolute no-no for me. Now, I will jump ahead here and say, or I, I will reveal my secrets that we have done this recipe already. We made it with regular pasta and I tested off the charts. I was over 11, it was bad. So today we're doing it one more time because we're still in the experimental stage of figuring out what I can eat. And we are trying chickpea pasta. That's right. I am very skeptical, but we're gonna give it a shot. Now, the one thing it does say is that that is supposed to be better for me. And we're also trying the reheat method where we cook it, we allow it to cool, and then we bring it back and we reheat it. Now, the one thing that I have found with that is certain things seem to work really well. Potatoes, if I eat potatoes reheated, like in a stew or something like that, that I canned, my body has absolutely no problem. I test perfect every time. Well, not perfect, but perfect in my books. But pasta, rice, it's not making a lot of difference. Uh, whether I reheat it or not, if I'm honest. So I'm very curious to see what we test at the end of this meal. This box here is, uh, what is it here? 227 grams. So basically the size of a macaroni and cheese box, right? Craft dinner. And it is supposed to have 62 grams of carbs for half the package. Now, once I take off the fibers, you're sitting at 55 grams. And we're gonna be splitting this between four of us, which is why we need to go out and harvest some cabbage because that is our trick. We like to bulk out everything with things that are perfectly fine for me to eat, like cabbage or bean sprouts or lettuce or kale, things like that. So in this recipe, we're going to be frying off some of that cabbage to mix in with the pasta and I'm just going to throw it all together in a pot or in a casserole and we're going to bake it with a little bit of cheese on top in the end. So first thing we need to do is go out and see how many cherry tomatoes we've got. We've got to get those in, get them seasoned up with some basil and then roast them. And once they're roasted, we'll then come back and kind of compile this into our casserole to do a final cook off and that all wonderful taste test. Well, even though I'm out here to harvest tomatoes, you can see behind me, it looks like I need to harvest some noodle beans as well. So we're gonna throw some beans into this too, guys, why not? That's how I like to cook. When you have stuff fresh, you might as well use it. All right, so the recipe calls for 500 grams. I have no idea how much is 500 grams. Plus I've got all the greens in there, but you can see it's a pretty big bowl and it's just about full. And I didn't even get to the plant that we actually planted intentionally. This is just off of all these silly volunteers that keep coming from this uh, cherry tomato. Um, I'm trying to think, Gray's sweet cherry, that's what they are. Gray's sweet cherry tomato, amazing tomato, but be prepared for what will happen because they'll be everywhere because they drop all these little ones because you don't get to them all and then they just grow everywhere. So plenty of cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna stop there because I do have some Romas inside that if I'm short, I can use those as well. I think it will work just fine to roast a Roma in with these cherry tomatoes, but I have a feeling that's gonna be 500 grams, but I'm still gonna take a little peek at the plant that I actually planted to see how many tomatoes are on it because I'm betting it's gonna be full too. It's actually not looking too terrible. There are a lot on there, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna pick any from there today. Oh, they look so good. It is so humid out here. My hair is just going, woo. <laughs> but look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, I'm losing them. Getting past mid-September now and still harvesting tons and tons of noodle beans. I can't believe how much we've put into the freezer off of this one trellis behind me. It is wild. Some of these will be going into dinner, but I'm guessing we're gonna be filling another bag for the freezer. 
So now we need one last thing and that's a cabbage. I already have a pepper inside from when I picked them the other day. So we're just gonna go get a cabbage from the other garden. I will bring it back here and I'll show you and then we'll get cooking. No wait, we won't get cooking yet because I still have to pick basil. Cause there's basil in here and I love basil. So we're going for lots of it. All right, so I harvested two cabbage. As you can see, one was a little bit worse for wear. It had to come out, part of it had rotted. Uh, and then I harvested another one that was quite in good shape. So hopefully this will give us enough for a few meals, but uh, I got to get it apart and clean it and see how that goes. But I'm thinking this one here is going to be a beautiful one. Really nice, not even really any bugs on it or anything. So super pleased with that. I'm not great at growing cabbage, so this is pretty good for me. And while I was over there, I raided the kale jungle. As you can see, lots of kale still growing in the garden and we desperately need to get a whole bunch frozen but I'm still waiting on that new fridge in order to make that dream reality. But I did harvest a whole bunch here because we're gonna cut up this kale to go into this as well. Toss it all in with the pasta when it goes in to bake. It's gonna be amazing. And our basil. I can't get over how beautiful my basil patch looks and I certainly don't wanna waste all of this, but I've dehydrated more than I could possibly use probably in two or three years. So we're trying to find fresh ways to use it right now to uh, get it eaten up. I've had it in salads, things like that. It's been really, really wonderful to have. And worst case scenario, I'll chop it all down and I'll dehydrate it. We're gonna get this all inside, get it all washed up, and then we'll bring it back. All right, so we got those cherry tomatoes all cleaned up. You can see there in the bowl, that's the 500 grams. It's adequate, but to be honest, for feeding all four of us, I don't think it's enough. Now, what I did do was I took out the cherry tomatoes that weren't super ripe. I may have had enough if I had picked all ripe cherry tomatoes, but I didn't. So we're gonna add a little bit of Roma tomato diced up into this and it's just gonna roast in the pan, same as what those cherry tomatoes would have. I am pretty sure it's going to still taste fantastic. So our next step is going to be to add olive oil. We want three, maybe four tablespoons pending. You want it to give it a really good coating. And then we're going to chop up some of that basil and throw it in there, some salt, pepper. Anyways, I'll go through it as I put it all in the bowl. All right, so to these tomatoes, we're going to add about three tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of garlic powder. You could use fresh garlic as well one teaspoon of dried oregano, 10 to 15 fresh basil leaves all chopped up. And again, you could use dried here. Half a teaspoon of black pepper, quarter teaspoon of salt. Oh, oven's ready. And instead of the one teaspoon of sugar that it calls for, we're just going to use a little smidgen of our green stevia powder. This is just ground up dried stevia. Then we're just going to get that mixed up. Make sure it's nicely covered with oil, which it looks good. Beautiful. Oh gosh. It smells so good. And now we're just going to put that into our little casserole dish so that it could go into the oven. We're at 350 degrees and we're gonna roast that for about 30 minutes or until they kind of start to uh, bubble up on top. And now while those tomatoes are roasting, we're gonna get everything else cut up that needs to go into this casserole. I'm going to be adding cabbage, which I'm gonna fry in my wok first. So let's get going on that while this is in the oven. All right, so it's time to get the rest of the stuff in the pot. Now, this is one of my classic meals. I just throw stuff in whatever we've got. And tonight we're using peppers, noodle beans, kale, and then that cabbage, like I mentioned, to add to our pasta in the first place. So it may not be how you'd cook it. You could also just make extra pasta and throw this all together. But as I've said, we are watching our carb intake on that. So that is why we're kind of bulking it out with vegetables. But the one thing I would definitely do is toss it with the kale, which is what my subscriber recommended. And it is amazing, the flavor you get with that. So we're gonna get everything into the pot. So we're gonna start with the cabbage in the pot, fry that off a bit because I like to make sure that's good and cooked before I add everything else because the other stuff's gonna bake a bit in the oven as well. So we're gonna get the cabbage in, then I'll bung everything else in here add our noodles and we're also going to be using chicken 
in this meal. And then by that time, our tomato, our roasted tomato sauce should be all finished. And we'll get that in the pot as well with all the rest of that basil. And then hopefully bake it off. It looks so pretty. And the one thing I do have to say is fresh cabbage is like a different ball game. I mean, I just went and picked this and the wonderful smell from it is just fantastic. But we're pretty much ready for our kale and our chicken. Now, the one thing I will say is my chicken is already pre-cooked. That is one of our textbook moves. We usually cook in bulk and then I either freeze or I can it or something like that afterwards. So this is already cooked up. So we're gonna just kind of put it into the casserole at the end. Fresh kale going in. We're getting a lot of brassicas in this meal. Here comes our chicken. You'll notice that our chicken looks black. This is because it's from silky chickens, which have a black pigment to their skin, which is kind of interesting. Oh, it's still a little frozen, but that's okay. All right, so I've transferred everything to my crock pot so that we can get this into the oven. Plus it was burning in the wok. So there is our veggie mix. And look at this gorgeous roasted tomato sauce here. I'm excited to get that in there and burst all those tomatoes open. Although the idea of roasting them is that they burst open and you can see there that they did. So that's fantastic. And there I have my cooled down pasta. So let's put it together. So first thing I'm going to do is get my past in here. To be honest, this packet cooked up to be more than I thought it was going to, which is nice. Not saying I love the taste or texture, but stir that in a little bit. So we're going to put a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese in there. Break that one up though. Lovely. Get our oven back on. It's already up to temperature. And here we go. Get all this wonderful sauce in here. Look at that. It's so pretty and looks so healthy. Now we're just going to put a little sprinkle of cheddar cheese on top and into the oven it'll go for about 20 minutes to bake off. Here we go, all baked up and ready for some taste testing. It looks so incredible and I wish you could smell it. Yum, yum, yum. Look at that. So tasty. It looks a little bit warm, but I'm still going to give it a try for you guys. Still not convinced on these chickpea noodles, but... actually not bad not bad at all so definitely going to enjoy this meal and I'll come back with a test to see how much this affects my blood sugars in two hours all right guys moment of truth it's time to test see if I'm allowed to eat that pasta see if reheating it a second time made any sort of difference I am going to say I will be I hate this oh I'll be skeptical, but let's have a look-see. Watch with me. Oh, don't be bad. 8.4. That's actually not bad. Hmm. I'll take it. That's surprising, actually. And like I said, last time having regular pasta, I was over an 11. So there could be some truth to it. Uh, we also did, I'm going to say it, it wasn't a full serving because it was already split between four of us and we didn't eat it all. Uh, we ended up a little bit left over for James to take for school tomorrow. So kind of a fifth of, a, no, a fifth of the box. So I don't know how that works out exactly. That's a little less than half of a serving each. So an 8.4 is not too bad. Still not to the 7.8 that I should be, but Ah, that's actually really exciting because that means it could work. So we're going to keep playing around with this and I'm going to keep informing you guys how I'm doing with some of these meals that we're experimenting with because I, that's one thing I will admit, we're finding it hard researching out there um, what 
is our food, what are our food options, um, or my food options, and unfortunately everybody else has to eat like me because I have no willpower. So, either way, super pleased with that, and super pleased with that meal in general. That's the second time we've had it now, this time obviously with not spaghetti. <laughs> so, stay tuned, and we will see what we get up to uh, for some meals in the future.